Uh, I'm glad to be here. First, I'd like to talk about the word of the day. Uh, actually, I wrote to you that uh, the song that sticks in my head is the summer soundtrack was Happy Together. Thank you so much. That was quite simple. But I believe it's the turtles, in it, but I may have that wrong. It was the turtles. But I, I, the memory I have is of after lights out, hearing somebody out in the darkness away from summer camp playing Happy Together um, and having it waft across the lake. And that's just my, my, my memory of summer. So uh, I want to talk to you today. As you know, you've probably gathered by now that uh, professionally and oratorically, I like to speak about obesity and about food addiction. Today I'm going to approach the same topic, but through the prism of France. I've been to France six or seven times in my life. I don't speak French. One wonders, wouldn't you learn if you were going to go that many times? Uh, but I, I think of France as my uh, little chamber of horrors. The first time I went, I was 14 or 15 years old. My entire family went to uh, Europe for the first time, Paris for Christmas, New Year's, and London. And of course, one of our stops was the Louvre. Being a uh, teenage, know-it-all, close-minded teenager, I went in and saw the two things that you have to see if you go to the Louvre, two, wing victory and the Mona Lisa. And then I went and sat out on the front steps waiting for my family to look at God knows what they were looking at. Well, while I was sitting there, a man came over to me and he started kissing me. And I was shocked, of course, and I tried to fend him off, and I don't speak French, as I said, and I was gar finally a garçon, garçon, trying to tell him I'm a boy. And uh, as soon as I said that, he went, ho, 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 and he went off. That, that's how I remember it. I'm pretty sure that's how it happened. Uh, now, uh, he, he, perhaps I shouldn't use the term, but what stuck in my mind all these years from that incident was not that I was sexually assaulted, which is the mildest possible. I mean, it really wasn't, but I was assaulted. What stuck in my mind is that he thought I was a girl. And the reason he thought I, I was a girl is because of my body shape and my body size. Uh, that's my first story from France. I went back in the 1980s for five days on my way to Israel to be with family. And I went with very modest goals, then he made he very unadventurous goals. My intention was to go back and see all the things that I'd seen when I had been at 15 instead of finding what the rest of Paris had to offer. And I was going to spe spend at least $100 for dinner every night on myself alone. And this is in the 80s. So the first night I come in from the airport, I check into my room, I go to the concierge. How do I get to Maxime's? Uh, it may be Maxime, I'm not sure. But uh, how do I get to that famous restaurant where Toulouse Lautrec uh, painted for his supper? And uh, they said, well, you take the metro. And they pulled out a map. And I, oh, no, 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 I don't want to take the metro. I, I, I'd like to take a cab. And they looked at me like I had three eyes. I, but I insisted, so they put me in a cab. I asked the cabbie, do you speak English? <clears throat> oh, no, no. Not only does she not speak English, that was an awful question to ask. And so we went the two or three miles in silence. When we got there, I paid what I, I thought I owed her. And she looked at me like I hadn't given her enough money. So I thought maybe I'd made a mistake. I just arrived in the country, so I gave her some more money. And then I gave her some more money. And literally, this is true, I gave her all the francs that I had in my pocket. And it wasn't until I was sitting there at dinner that I realized that I had just paid $60 for a three, two or three mile cab ride. The reason I could figure it out is that I had cashed $100 at the airport, I had paid 30 to 35 to take my cab into the city, and I'd given her the rest. The reason I did that, it was what go the foremost governing principle of my trip to, to, uh, that trip to France was fear. I was afraid of subways, I was afraid to get lost when I didn't speak the language, and I was afraid to question, well, how come I'm paying you $60 for a $3 cab ride? I did take the subway back, however, and for the rest of the trip. Uh, perhaps that's what I earned for that $60. But uh, that's the big, you know, the big uh, story that remains in my mind from that trip. The third time I went back was in the 1990s. I was already in recovery from my food addiction. And I'd begun dating. I'd been dating a woman in Boston for uh, six or eight weeks. She had made clear from the very beginning, I'm not interested in anything long term, but sure, I'll go out with you. When she told me she was going to France, I said, can I come visit? No, absolutely not. Well, she, we exchanged a couple of uh, 
letters. They were romantic letters. And the third time she wrote back to me, she said, why don't you come to visit? I'm there. I really like this woman. I'm there. So as it worked out, I left, or I arrived, on Bastille Day, which of course is the National Independence Day. And I, I went to the apartment that she had rented, and after I showered, we, shall we say, uh, rekindled our relationship. And afterwards, we got up, we were standing at the window, embracing, uh, cooled by the lovely breezes, looking out at the Parisian rooftops, and in the distance, again, I swear this is true, I, I, it sounds better to have made it up perhaps, in the distance were the national fireworks over the Eiffel Tower. And I had the thought, I actually told her, that's it, I have peaked. No matter what else happens in my life, this moment is the best moment I'm ever going to have. It was fabulous. We had a wonderful week. We were not apart except for about two hours the entire week, and it was wonderful. Well, on Friday, I'm supposed to leave on Saturday. On Friday, we're in the Tuileries. The gardens where, coincidentally, Toulouse-Lautrec painted. On one end is the Champs-Élysées, on the other end is the Louvre. And there's a summer uh, carnival, and there's a Ferris wheel. And we're in the Ferris wheel, and I say something casual on the way to another point about, well, now that we're together. Hold it right there, buddy. We are not together. I told you I'm not interested in, any, in anything long term. We've had a nice time, but don't get carried away. Well, I was crushed. I was crushed. And we went back to the apartment. As soon as he fell asleep, I got up and I started eating. I uh, bought uh, some food at the airport. I ate all the way through the flight home, and I ate for some months afterwards. This is one of my foremost triggers, was uh, rejection from women. Rejection in general, but I seem to... Uh, feel it more from women. And uh, after I met my wife, she said, I'd like to go to Paris. And I told her, absolutely not, Paris is dead to me. Now we've been married eight years, we've been dating 10, or rather we, we, we've been together 10, and perhaps we will go there someday with uh, my son. It's not as bad as it used to be, but for those reasons and a couple others I didn't have time for, that's why France is my little chamber of horrors. Thank you. <laughs>